and welcome back to another edition on Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning With, and today our with is Meredith Rowe. So Meredith, can you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. So I'm based in Perth, Western Australia, and I lead the Virtual School Network or Vision program um, for Catholic Education Western Australia. It's a network approach to providing online courses for students. And we've been, um, it's been um, probably started about five years ago. Um, I started working on this for a school that I was working for. And then it's um, a couple of years ago, got moved to um, operate at a system level. Um, through Catholic Education Western Australia, or CEWA, as, as we call it. So we've got about 200 students this year studying online across the state. Um, we, you know, WA is a pretty big state. I think it's about a million uh, square miles. Um, so it would take me over a week to drive from our most northern to our most southern student if I had to. So uh, we're covering a really, really big area. All right. Now, I know Australia is on a uh, January through December school year, so this hit you guys near the end of term one, and I know you're starting in term two now, and, um, but regardless, you know, we've had this sort of disruption in the system in terms of how we've been delivering education, so what advice would you give school leaders on how they can, what they should be thinking about in terms of how to accommodate both students and teachers to alleviate some of this disruption? Mm, absolutely. Um, I think one of the critical things to do is to reflect on their experience they've had so far and to um, be continually reviewing their plans. Here in Australia, um, we have planned for kind of the worst case scenario, but what we've found is that we are um, continually having to review our plans as government restrictions lift or are imposed. So that need to be flexible has been a really critical part. And so reflecting on the good parts um, and the, the things that you perhaps do differently as well has been critical in how school resumes. So we, um, in CEWA, we have some of our students face-to-face -face and some of them um, are still in a remote learning scenario. And so critical to that has been um, staff wellbeing. Um, you know, without our teachers, um, neither mode of delivery works well. So, you know, we've had to be really careful about um, deprioritising perhaps some of our, um, our longer term goals we might have had planned for 2020 and being able to put them on the back burner so that we're not overburdening um, our staff and whatnot. And we've seen um, in our system, some fantastic ways of um, really supporting staff wellbeing from Friday night online staff quiz nights. Um, we've had some um, staff who have created online music concerts, recorded them on DVDs and sent them to local um, aged community uh, facilities because those um, elderly, pe elderly people can't access um, the internet easily to watch things that are online. So there's lots of great ways that... Um, people are coming together and, and um, connecting. And I think in a similar way, it's really important to acknowledge and celebrate the great things that are happening, whether it's through that face-to-face -face delivery, whether it's someone going above and beyond um, for a colleague, um, whether it's in that online community, that it's so important to celebrate and acknowledge all the amazing stories that are coming out in the academic sense of um, our environment that we find ourselves in, but also that pastoral um, part as well, which is really important in any system, but particularly um, for us at Catholic Education WA. Yeah, absolutely. The other thing um, that I'd perhaps mention is um, communication. It has been um, absolutely critical for those plans um, because they've been flexing so much here in Australia um, or the need to flex that the, the strategy, if it's revised, is, is communicated really clearly. And even if it's as much as, um, look, I'm going into a briefing um, with our, um, our principals and as soon as that's over, I'm, I'll be in a better place to let you know what's happening next. Those small messages to our teachers have been really critical in helping them manage their concerns and anxieties because at the end of the day, our teachers just want to do the best job they can. And so they want to have as much knowledge and preparation time as possible. And that communication of strategy um, has been a really important part of that as well. 
The other thing um, that I think we're going to see moving forward is um, screen fatigue. And so um, I think people are going to have to become very strategic um, about their reason for bringing students together um, and making sure there's great value in doing that. Likewise, with the broader school community as well, in bringing together the, the parent community. So if you're running um, a parent information night um, at the start of a new school year or start of a term, you know, parents have been on lots of these meetings. Um, they're starting to get fatigued with them as well. Give them a really valuable reason to be online. Same with um, your students, you know, give them another reason to join that online assembly at the start of, of the year. Um, you know, that value and incentive is really important for a sense of community and connection to continue, regardless of the mode of delivery that's happening. Okay. Now, you mentioned about planning for um, the future and based upon, you know, the government's restrictions are opening up. And I know that um, many states, including your own and your, fed, your national government as well, have started to open up things. And the likelihood that we might see local flare-ups in specific parts of the country um, increases. Uh, this being a pandemic, there's a likelihood that there's probably a second wave that's going to come at some point in the future. So there's a good chance that we may find ourselves in some geographic areas or maybe system-wide having to close down large parts of the system again. What can school leaders start to do now so that when that happens again, that we aren't left scrambling like we were this time, that the transition is a little more seamless since we know the likelihood is, is high that it's gonna happen? Mm, absolutely. So. I mentioned before the importance of reflecting on what's worked well thus far. Um, you know, as um, you know, in the normal cadence of schools, they're so busy and um, we don't want to lose that opportunity to um, act on our reflections. So I think that's the first critical part is to act on our reflections, update any plans for, um, you know, educating in the remote um, environment if that's what's required or a blended approach, um, et cetera. So having updating plans but including um, student voice in that is really critical as well as staff. So there's a sense of ownership in that. Interestingly, if we go into a similar situation again, we'll be doing so with preconceived ideas. So prior to this, our students and a lot of our staff had no idea really what to expect. And um, we won't have that this time round. They will have ideas. So our students who have absolutely loved being able to learn from home, um, or learn in perhaps a different way, they're going to be really excited about it. The students that perhaps didn't have that great experience, they're going to be feeling quite negative about it. And the same could be said for staff as well, our teachers. So I think it's really important to do what you can to manage those preconceived ideas. And that, I guess, links back to the idea of celebrating the great stories that come out and that reflection so that you know where your areas of development are for a staff group and um, that, you know, you have those opportunities to share learnings and, and what will be different. And again, it's all about communicating with your families, with your parents, um, with the students, with the teachers. I'd also, um, I also think that um, this is quite an, an amazing time we have in education to reimagine what school is going to be like when it comes back. I know there's been a lot of conversation globally um, about this, um, but it is, it's a really exciting time that we have in the, the history of education, no matter where you are in the world. And so I think um, perhaps rethinking what your staff professional learning plan might look like um, for the rest, you know, the near future, so that you can continue to um, learn from those champions that will have risen from this in, on your staff and really tap into their experience and expertise to lead um, some, some professional development that ensures the new skills that have been developed can continue to um, broaden um, in terms of scope and depth of skill um, so that it then becomes an embedded and almost natural part of um, delivery once we're back in a, in a traditional face-to-face -face school setting. Um, I think that student um, voice will play a key part in that um, as teachers, we always want to ensure our students are engaged in learning and there will be a certain percentage of students now in every class that have had this different experience and want that to continue 
on into their um, their normal face-to-face -face delivery um, as well. So I think some careful um, and clever planning of professional learning. Um, you know, remote learning by its very nature is um, at best, um, you know, temporary. It's supposed to be temporary in, in nature. And so the skill level is perhaps not what we would expect from our more experienced online delivery um, teachers. But there's no reason that moving forward we can't move that skill development along and broaden that depth and provide new experiences um, and encourage people to try new things as well. So while the, the initial focus might have been on um, delivery and that important making sure students can connect, um, are able to access their learning and can submit learning and receive feedback, now this next phase of development in our teachers might look at how can we connect our students globally. So it might be through um, the Skype for Classroom program or it might be through Flipgrid, lots of different programs out there. But it's, um, I think, a great opportunity to keep that development of staff um, going while balancing that, of course, with well-being, <laughs> their well-being as well. There's, there's, there'll be lots of, um, of balancing required, I think. Absolutely. All right. Very good. Well, thank you very much, Meredith. So this has been another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning With, and today our with has been Meredith Rowe. Thank you, Michael.